Salutations, people of Earth. I am back with another review of a microphone that's been sitting on my shelf for so long that it has become obsolete and they've released a new version. So today we're looking at this guy, the IK Multimedia iRig Mic HD. If you do want to pick this guy up, it'll set you back around 110 bucks. But if I were you, I would spring the extra 10 or 20 bucks and go for the newer version. Uh, like always, I'll throw some links down below. Now for the majority of this review, the mic is connected directly to my Mac. There are no gain settings on the computer, but the gain on the microphone is set at around 11 o'clock. I'm not going to do any post processing, but I will likely boost it in post. So check the doobly do to see what I did. And before we go any farther, let me go ahead and address the pop filter. Uh, it's because this microphone sucks terribly when it comes to plosives. Every, every single P or B just causes this thing to peak or clip and it becomes unusable. So that's why I'm using this. Normally I don't, but otherwise this review would be unlistenable. Now let's go ahead and talk about what comes in the box. First, everything comes in this microphone pouch. You're obviously going to get the microphone. You get a microphone mount, which does come with a 5 8 to 3 8 inch adapter. You get a USB cable to connect it to your computer. You get a lightning cable to connect it to your iOS device. You get this little cable protector thing that screws onto the end of the microphone once you've connected a cable so it doesn't get tugged off. And you get some documentation. Now when it comes to the build quality, it feels perfectly sufficient. It does have an all metal body as well as a sturdy feeling metal grill, but it is a little bit on the light side and that makes me a bit concerned about the durability of it. And then also I just got to show you this microphone's capsule because this is really weird looking and I've never seen a mic capsule that looks like this. But back to the features, on one side you're going to find the microphone gain dial which will obviously control the microphone's gain. And on the other side you have a multicolor LED light that will be bright blue when it's connected. It will be green when you're getting a low input signal, orange when the signal is okay, and red when the microphone signal is clipping. Then as far as specs, this thing has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 40 hertz to 18 kilohertz. It has a max SPL of 134 decibels, but this is with 3% total harmonic distortion. Most other microphone manufacturers measure this specification at around 0.5% THD or 1% THD. So 3% THD, sure, it gives you a better SPL, but you're gonna be getting more distortion at that level. So I don't really trust that spec that much. But then it has a bit depth of up to 24 bit and a sampling rate of up to 48 kilohertz. So now I'm spinning around the microphone to 90 degrees to see what the off axis coloration and rejection is. Then we'll go ahead and move around to 90 degrees to see how it handles from the rear. Then we're gonna go ahead and continue spinning it around to 90 degrees. And then we are back around to the front of the microphone. Because this is a handheld dynamic microphone, now I'm passing it back and forth to see how it does with handling noise. Now I'm typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. Right now I'm right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect. About three inches away from the microphone. About one foot away from the microphone. About two feet away from the microphone. And about four feet away from the microphone. Now I'm recording the microphone directly to my iPhone 10 using the IK Multimedia iRig mic recorder thing. If you do want to export your files as WAV, you do need to pay for an upgraded version, so keep that in mind. But I am recording a 24-bit 48 kilohertz with the gain at the exact same setting, and this is how the audio is sounding. Now I have the mic HD connected directly to a Windows 10 PC. The gain on the microphone was not adjusted, but there are gain settings on the computer, and the microphone level is set at around 70%. And this is how the audio is sounding on a Windows PC. So right now the gain is set at 12 o'clock. I'm going to decrease it all the way down to zero and then slowly increase it so you can hear what kind of noise is generated by this mic's preamp. Nine o'clock. About 12 o'clock. About three o'clock. Then at about five o'clock. <laughs> I 
I-K The plosives are bad The plosives they suck They're ruining every take well, all I can really say here is that it's a lightning slash USB microphone that does exactly what it says it's going to do. In terms of pros, this thing is just insanely convenient because it's compatible on Windows, on Mac, and on iOS over the lightning cable. I'm not sure if it's compatible with Android or if it's compatible with Linux, but just those three operating systems makes this a very convenient and pretty usable microphone. I also really like the fact that this has an HD analog to digital converter, meaning that it records at 24 bit up to 48 kilohertz. And lastly, it doesn't sound like it's a presence boosted microphone, so what you're recording should be more accurate to life. Sure, you are losing out on a little bit of the clarity that comes along with a presence and treble boost, and you're also not getting the same high fidelity sound that you expect out of a modern presence boosted microphone, but if you do prefer a flatter sound or if you're looking for a more natural recording, this has that. But then in terms of cons, this thing does lack latency free monitoring. I should note that that was resolved on the new version, the Mic HD2, but for this microphone, that is a huge con. And then as I already mentioned at the beginning of the video, this thing just sucks when it comes to plosives. So you will need a pop filter or you could be a little bit more careful with the microphone placement and place it off to the side of you and just speak kind of past it so all your air is directed not into the diaphragm of the microphone. So what are my overall thoughts here? I think it's a perfectly decent microphone. I love that it's HD. I love that it's compatible with iOS, Mac OS, and Windows. I thought it sounded perfectly boring on the electric and the acoustic and on the voice, which is what you expect out of flatter microphones, so I can't really fault it for that. But the plosives on this thing really kind of ruin it for me. It's It makes the audio almost unusable. So when it comes to recommending this microphone, if you're looking at this mic as a USB mic for your computer, I would say don't get it. Go ahead and look somewhere else because the USB microphone market is full of different options that would perform better in terms of plosives and not require you to do multiple take upon take upon take to try to avoid any kind of air getting into the diaphragm. But on the other hand, if you're looking for a handheld dynamic microphone that has a somewhat neutral frequency response that runs over a lightning cable into iOS, it's a pretty limited market in that arena. So you may be stuck with it. Obviously, I'm going to tell you to go with the Mic HD2. I don't know how that sounds in comparison to this. But if I were you, I would go with that because you are getting latency-free monitoring and hopefully they fix the plosive issue. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. If you want to influence what I review, geeksrising.com slash podcast. And go cast a vote there. Go vote for the microphones you want me to review. You want more videos like this? Click the logo beneath me. Check out the Discord server. Link in the description. And I will see you all later. Thanks for watching. Bye.